it's Allie. It is day 15 of the 21 day fix extreme, which means I'm getting close to the end and it's so exciting. Um, but today I wanted to talk about something um, a little bit different. Um, I talked on social media today about my journey and um, I know that when people come to my page, um, they might not know things about me and I just wanted to share that um, because I do have a journey, even though it might just look like I've always been the same weight or haven't lost that much. Um, my journey has been a little bit up and down and I just want to break the myth that when somebody um, looks skinny or athletic, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're healthy and I just want to share that with you guys. Um, so anyways, um, in high school and college, I always cheered and did gymnastics so I had a pretty decent athletic build. Um, so I was grateful for that. And um, and then came kids. Um, but anyways, in high school and college, I looked pretty athletic, but I was far from healthy on the inside. And it really didn't start to take effect until I was in my 20s where my body started wearing away a little bit because in high school, you can get away with eating whatever you want and it doesn't backfire. Um, but anyways, when Jordan and I met, I was pretty much around 125. That was my usual weight, um, give or take a few pounds. And um, I remember when we met, I had horrible um, acid reflux and I had to keep a bottle of Tums at his apartment because I needed to take them every night to even feel okay, um, which that in itself is a big red flag that something's not going on right inside of you. Um, and I was anxious out the wazoo and I just always had aches and pains and um, it's obvious now that I'm eating healthy that it was my diet that was doing that to me. So even though I appeared to look semi-healthy on the outside, um, my inside was um, falling apart. And then I got pregnant with Vincent and um, I gained 70 pounds with his pregnancy um, because I like to eat. And some people might get healthy during pregnancy, but I was the complete opposite and I stuffed my face with food and um, didn't take it seriously. And I was borderline gestational diabetes every pregnancy. Um, I had to take the three hour test and my doctors would be like, dude, you're like this close to failing it. You need to clean up your act. Um, but I didn't care I passed it. So do you think I changed my ways? No, I passed it, so I'm fine. Um, so the past six years haven't been that great. Um, during Vincent's pregnancy, I weighed more than Jordan. Um, I was wearing his shirts. I could barely fit into anything. And after his pregnancy, um, I was pretty embarrassed with how I look. But I wasn't like, I was embarrassed for anybody else to see me, like per se, like my picture on Facebook, I would like crop it so you couldn't see the rest of my body because my arms were giant. Um, but I would crop it and I didn't really want anybody to see me, but I didn't care enough that I, was I, wouldn't, I wasn't changing my ways. I didn't really care. I didn't want anybody to see me, but I wasn't embarrassed enough or I didn't care enough to make a difference. Um, so that was after Vincent and then I, we had three more pregnancies after that and um, I was never healthy really during pregnancy. The healthiest I was was gaining 40 pounds with Jude's pregnancy. That was my best. Um, but anyways, after we had Jude, I started experiencing a lot of pains in my body and I had extreme fatigue to like where I wanted to take a nap every single day. And I kind of just chalked it up to having um, three kids at that point. And so I didn't really think much of it. Um, and then I started experiencing um, some pretty nasty joint pain. <laughs> and um, it was to the point where I had no control over it. Like I was taking like joint supplements trying to make it better and nothing was fixing it. It was in my hips, it was in my wrist, every single place where you have a joint, it hurt. And I couldn't sleep and I was, it was horrible and I was anxious about it because I thought something was severely wrong. So I went to the doctor. I went to the doctor like three or four times and they kept, um, sorry, you see I get interrupted all the time. Um, anyways, go, but they kept doing blood tests and trying to pinpoint something and nothing was coming back. Um, and so they chalked it up to me having either rheumatoid arthritis or um, fibromyalgia, which I think I was 27 or 28 at the time this was all happening. And they thought that was weird that I would have those because it didn't run in my family or whatnot. Um, so anyways, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't have an answer after all these tests and it, the pain wasn't going away. Nothing was working. Um, so I went to Jordan's dad, who is a chiropractor, and. Um, told him all my stuff and all my symptoms and he diagnosed me with adrenal fatigue which um, pretty much means that my adrenal glands were being depleted of the things that they were supposed to be doing um, and I was pretty much just killing my body um, 
to, I mean, to say it lightly, I wasn't killing myself necessarily, but I was beating my body down to the point where my adrenal glands were not working properly, which means I was tired, I was having joint pains, and I was just horrible all over. So anyways, he got me in check and, you know, told me I needed to clean up my act and um, gave me a ton of supplements to get better. And I started doing that and I started feeling better um, within a month or so. And then after that, I got pregnant with Sam. And um, even though I knew that I had these joint pains and all this stuff that would come back, I didn't care. I went back to my old habits. And um, after Sam and after a horrible postpartum um, anxiety and depression phase that I had with him, which I'm sure eating bad did not help my case, um, Anyways, I decided I had enough. Um, I could read any, all these things about things that I should be doing for my life, but at the time it just wasn't right for me. So it wasn't until after Sam that I finally took the steps to get my life back. I mean, through the years, I knew exactly what I needed to do. I knew I should be eating clean. I knew I should be exercising, but I had a million excuses of why I couldn't do those things. Oh, I have kids, or I don't like salad, or I, I just don't have time for it. That was pretty much my reasoning for everything. And I also thought it sounded crazy that if I was already exhausted, that working out would make me have more energy. Like, isn't that counterproductive? That was my reasoning. I'm like, these people are insane. If they think I'm gonna work out when I can barely lift my head from the pillow in the morning, like these people are crazy. Um, but after Sam and after suffering for a few months of just straight hell, and you know, hating life and just being a complete, I swear my days were a complete waste. Um, I was like a zombie. Um, I decided that I had enough and I had to fix this and I knew what I needed to do to fix it. It was just me putting myself into motion and doing what I knew I needed to do. I mean, there's books out there. Everybody knows that if you wanna be healthy, all you have to do is exercise and eat clean. It's not rocket science, but you have to do it. So after Sam, I finally made myself a priority and I decided I don't wanna feel this way again. I don't want these joint pains to come back and I don't wanna spiral out of control. So it sucked, you guys. It sucked at first and um, I could barely make it through 10 minutes of a workout and I had to find new ways to eat because I, I don't really care to eat clean, you guys. Um, I used to love like wings and stuff like that, um, but I just had to get creative and find things that I like. I don't like salads, so I do stir fries. Um, it just, it took me a while to get into the swing of things, and now I can finally make it through workouts without dying. I'm not perfect. I still use three pound weights. I still do push ups on my knees, but I'm down 35 pounds um, in a year. And it's all because I took that first step and said, I'm going to get healthy, and I owe it to myself to take care of my body. And I have to stop beating it up because if I don't do this, nobody's going to do it for me. Jordan can tell me all day that I should be eating a salad like he does. And if I don't if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. And it's just like I can tell you all day long that you need to eat clean and um, exercise, but it's not going to fix you until you get it in your head that you want this change. So anyways, I just wanted to share that. And um, I've been there. I have weighed in the 180s and I understand that it sucks and it's not fun and it's embarrassing and you don't want people to see um, your body and you just, it's its not fun. I've been there. And um, you can come back from it and um, I'm going into my 30s next year and I weigh less than I did in college um, cheerleading and I say this all the time but we were weighed in and um, so the guys could lift us. We had to be a certain weight and I couldn't break below 123 in college. And here I am, I'm at 116 today. I mean, how's that happen after four kids? It's totally doable. Whatever you think in your head, you can beat that. If you think you can't have abs after kids, I have them. They just aren't as um, nice as, you know, somebody who hasn't had kids, but they're there, you guys. Um, so you can do anything you put your mind to. Um, this is way longer than I want, but I just wanted to share that. I've been bigger than I want to um, ever confess to. I've been at the lowest lows, and um, you can lift yourself back up. So I just wanted to share that with you guys if you're struggling and um, needed a boost. So I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.